every time I post a Q&A on my social platforms, I get at least one person that asks about red light therapy for endometriosis and sometimes more. What is it? What are some applications of red light therapy? And is there any application for endometriosis specifically? I thought it's about time I do a deep dive into red light therapy for endometriosis. And that is what I'm talking about in today's video. If you haven't already, please like this video, share it with a friend and hit that subscribe button for the best endo content here on YouTube. So to start us off, what is red light therapy? So red light therapy is also known as low level laser therapy or photobiomodulation. Red light therapy involves exposing the body to low levels of red or near infrared light. Unlike ultraviolet light, which can damage the skin, red light therapy is thought to penetrate the skin and promote cellular function and regeneration. What are some general applications for red light therapy? Why do people use it? There are many applications for red light therapy, many of which involve improvements in skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis, and acne. And in case you didn't know, psoriasis and rosacea are more common in the endometriosis population, just as a side note. Other applications for red light therapy include assisting in wound healing and reducing inflammation, alleviating pain from conditions such as osteoarthritis, enhancing brain function, and supporting muscle recovery after exercise. Research has indicated that red light therapy can stimulate cellular energy production, leading to this diverse array of benefits. So before I go into talking specifically about red light therapy and its applications for people with endometriosis, I want to talk about a, an overlapping theme, and that's thyroid health and thyroid support through the application of red light therapy. So in addition to the benefits observed in the research about red light therapy and skin, wound healing, muscle recovery, and brain function, we also have some research showing that red light therapy can be helpful for supporting the thyroid, which absolutely has a lot to do with endometriosis since we know that people with endometriosis are prone to sluggish thyroid function as well as to thyroid autoimmunity. So while thyroid dysfunction or autoimmunity is not the focus of this video, we do know that hypothyroidism and autoimmunity against the thyroid in the case of Hashimoto's, for example, are more common in the endometriosis population and tend to overlap with more severe forms of endo and more aggressive endometriosis proliferation. So this study showed that a combination of red light therapy application and vitamin D and selenium supplementation was effective at reducing thyroid antibodies and normalizing thyroid function. Two weekly treatments for three weeks minimum were applied in this study to see these results. So really it seems quite effective. This study showed that red light therapy was effective at improving your T3 to T4 ratio, reducing thyroid antibodies and reducing reliance on T4 supplementation in the form of levothyroxine. T4 is the thyroid hormone that's made mostly in the thyroid and then it goes into the periphery, so specifically into the gut and into the liver, and then it's converted into what a lot of people like to call active T3 thyroid hormone, and that's the hormone that does you know the bulk of the job of thyroid hormone in the body, like regulating metabolism and digestion and supporting body temperatures and that sort of thing. So naturally we wanna have a very healthy T3 to T4 ratio. So now let's dig into red light therapy and its applications specifically for endometriosis. One review showed that red light therapy used alongside other therapies like transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation otherwise known as TENS machine application, and or pulsed electromagnetic fields and manual physiotherapy were accepted and effective additional therapies for women with endometriosis in addition to sort of the standard therapies like surgery or pelvic floor physiotherapy, pain relieving medications, hormone therapies. Another small study including 44 participants showed that application of low level light therapy did result in a reduction in reported pain. Participants who received as little as one treatment were included in the study. So this goes to show that even conservative treatments, one treatment, two treatment, but not an excessive amount of treatment can be effective for reducing pain with endometriosis. Another small pilot study including 13 women showed that transvaginal red light therapy 
was effective at reducing pain by 60%. 13 women completed nine treatments and 10 women were successfully followed up to six months post-treatment, but benefits were observed as short as one week post-initiation of treatment. Another promising study for the application of red light therapy for endometriosis pain. What about red light therapy, endometriosis, and fertility? Red light therapy has been associated with improved fertility outcomes. A study demonstrated that multi-wavelength red and near-infrared photobiomodulation improved female fertility and reproductive health, contributing to healthy live births in females diagnosed with unexplained age-related infertility. This review also showed that a combination of assisted reproductive technologies and red light therapy resulted in better fertility outcomes inclusive of women 35 years of age or older older. One of the big reasons why red light therapy seems to improve fertility outcomes is because of its positive effects on mitochondrial health. Red light therapy was shown to reduce DNA mutations and improve the function of the mitochondria, the poor functioning of which is believed to be the real reason why women over the age of 35 have reduced egg quality. One study even showed that two thirds of women with previously failed IVF cycles achieved a successful pregnancy, even natural pregnancies, with the use of red light therapy. While this study was an infertile Japanese women, the application of red light therapy was shown to result in an increase in live births due to the positive effects of this therapy on fallopian tube and uterine tissue integrity improvements and blood flow. Because the study is done in infertile Japanese women, it certainly does reduce the generalizability of these results to the general population or even more specifically to the endometriosis population. However, it does show promise that red light therapy can be an accessible, usable therapy for supporting the integrity of uterine tissue and also for supporting the health of the fallopian tubes. Another area of applicability for red light therapy that overlaps with pain reduction and fertility in endometriosis patients is the positive effects that have been observed in the various microbiomes throughout the body. One extremely profound study found that the application of infrared laser treatment delivered to the abdomen of breast cancer patients three times per week for 11 weeks showed an increase in the beneficial anti-inflammatory species in the gut microbiome like Acromanzia and Fecalibacterium. Surely if we see positive changes to the gut microbiome with the application of red light therapy, then there would be a positive change to the vaginal microbiome. This is an area I like to explore with my endometriosis patients who have a fertility focus. I talk more about this in my video on eight steps to getting pregnant with endo. I'll link it in the show notes below. But one interesting application of red light therapy when it comes to the vaginal microbiome involves its effects on nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide is involved in how the immune system responds to BV in the vaginal microbiome and red light therapy stimulates nitric oxide. It's this same rise in nitric oxide that stimulates anti-inflammatory immune cells to prevent the growth of pro-inflammatory bacteria in the vaginal microbiome. While these findings are promising, it's important to note that research is still ongoing and red light therapy should not replace conventional treatments recommended by your healthcare professionals or your healthcare team. If you're considering red light therapy for endometriosis, here are some key points to keep in mind. So first, consult with a healthcare provider. Always discuss new treatments with your doctor or other members of your healthcare team to ensure they're appropriate for your specific condition. While I have heard reports anecdotally of red light therapy being life-changing, I've also heard people on the opposite end of the spectrum saying that it increased pain and increased body discomfort. So just keep that in mind. We're all unique and we might all tolerate a unique therapy like this a little differently. Second piece is to understand your limitations. While some studies show benefits, red light therapy is not a cure for endometriosis and may work best as a complementary treatment. So be aware of device quality. If opting for an at-home device, ensure that it's from a reputable manufacturer and you use it according to the guidelines. I'll talk about a few good quality ones that I found in a moment. Monitor your side effects. Although considered low risk, some individuals may experience temporary redness or irritation. And anecdotally, like I mentioned previously, I have 
heard reports of more pain or more discomfort in some users. Make sure that the type of device you're investing in is tailored to your source of pain. So if you're looking for something for your skin specifically, you might consider a mask, but if you're looking for something over the abdomen, you might consider a wrap or like a larger red light therapy device. Also select an option that offers multiple wavelengths. Red light therapy devices typically use wavelengths from the red, near infrared and infrared part of the light spectrum, about 600 nanometers to a thousand nanometers with longer wavelengths penetrating the skin more deeply. I've linked to some of the top rated red light therapy brands that I was able to identify in the show notes below. Some of these top rated brands include Lightstim, Higher Dose, Mito Red, Cellyuma, and Gemba Red. So just keep in mind, individual experiences with red light therapy can vary and more extensive research is needed to fully understand its efficacy for endometriosis. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for joining me. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more endo and fertility content and I'll see you in the next video.